Hi, I'm Penny and as usual I'm here to talk about some bookish things. Specifically, I've gotten a little bit behind on doing the four book mini reviews that I was trying to do every time I finish four books. So we're going to catch up. We're going to talk about four books that I read. The first one that I read is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson. This is the beginning of the Millennium series. I think originally a trilogy and then it got continued on. Also originally written in Swedish I believe and then translated. And I'm holding this physical book but I did in fact listen to the audio book um, which I do recommend. I think that this is the kind of book it's quite thick um, and very detailed writing. It goes into a lot of detail that isn't always necessarily relevant which I think is because it's a mystery book and it's kind of trying to give you lots of little clues that aren't really clues and trying to mislead you. Um, or at least trying to give you so much detail that the real clues are hidden within that detail. Which I didn't mind because it's not like boring detail. But I do think if I was reading it physically it would have been a bit painful. But actually listening to it was quite good and the narrator I thought was okay. So it does take a while to actually get into what the story is about. But what it's really about is kind of this locked room type murder mystery. Except that it's more of a locked island. Basically there's an accident that means a lot of people are stuck on this island. And during that time a girl goes missing. And then some very convoluted things happen that lead to this journalist who's been defamed kind of taking the lead on the investigation. What I will say is that there are a lot of white male characters in this, like so the main journalist guy, this old guy who's like the grandfather of the murdered woman, a bunch of others, and pretty much all the female characters end up wanting to sleep with this main journalist guy, which I hated. I was actually going to give this book four stars until another woman wanted to sleep with him and I was just so over it. What I would have liked is more Lisbeth Salander. So Lisbeth Salander is like this girl who she's had a really difficult life. She's kind of under government guidance, care, um, and but she's like a really talented investigator and computer hacker and I found her a really interesting character but there was not enough about her and she wanted to sleep with the journalist which I found completely unrealistic and that point alone dropped it from four to three. But I did really like the mystery and the outcome at the end was really good so I am looking forward to seeing where the rest of the series goes. Then the next book I read was actually the highest rated book on my physical TBR and so I thought it was going to be great but I think it's just not for me and that is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. So this is a classic book. Everyone always says this is a story about a lawyer defending a black guy who's been accused of rape by a white woman and that was like a little bit of the story but most of the story follows the lawyer's daughter and her mucking around with his son and their neighbor and just stupid kid shit mucking around. There's this other neighbor that has never left the house and they're really curious about that and like causing mischief trying to find out about him. And I think if the story had actually focused on this storyline, like maybe it had been told from the older son's perspective, I think I would have really loved it. Like I loved the chapter that went through the court case. I thought the court case was really interesting. But the rest of it was just so boring. I don't care about Scout and her people trying to make her into a lady. And I just don't care about all the stuff about their town and the different weird people in it and how they interact with Scout and her brother. I also think a lot of the time it was like all these tangents about family history that I also didn't care about. And I guess it's probably like a good look into what life was like at the time which gives context for the actual court case. But I just didn't care so I ended up giving this two stars because I was just really bored for most of it. I think it's probably a really important like history lesson for people to understand what racism was like in the past and how that has kind of got us to where we are today. But it was really boring so uh, a little bit disappointing. But I do think that that's um, a lot just down to me. I don't really like classics. Most classics I find quite boring. So like don't let me put you off reading it if you're interested in it.
I do still think it was a valuable read, just a boring one and difficult to push through the old style writing. In the last two books for this mini review I actually audiobooks I listened to. So those two books were Empress of a Thousand Skies and the sequel Blood of a Thousand Stars by Rhoda Beleza. So this is a sci-fi series and we're following this girl named Rhiannon. Uh, she's kind of in line to become the Empress. They call her the Rose of the Galaxy or something. Um, her family died when she was younger. Uh, and they also they live in this world and this is the part that I found the most interesting where everyone has a cube which is this thing that's like embedded in you and it stores memories for you and helps you to remember things. They always are contrasting that to your organic memories and how vague and less detailed your organic memories are. Uh, and most people don't like to turn off their cubes because they feel really disconnected from everything. I think as well the cubes are kind of like a link to provide news feeds and such. Uh, and you can also like transfer memories between people using your cubes. And it does kind of look into what impacts cubes might have on humanity. Kind of like that Black Mirror episode. But I thought the Black Mirror episode, if you know what I'm talking about, Really a lot of the problems the person had because of that was just because he was an arsehole. Whereas this I think really looked at the impacts on society as a whole. Not just people who cause problems for themselves. But there is also this thing where people seem to think that it wouldn't ever be possible. They're like shocked at the idea that you might be able to steal people's memories or corrupt people's memories. And if you work in tech you know that if there was any kind of technology like that of course it would be possible to corrupt people's memories or to overwrite them. So I found it a bit funny that everyone was like, no, that would never be possible. Of course it's possible. So there were some really interesting parts in this story, but I could not get on board with the writing style. It just kept going into so much depth. And some of it was this like getting lost in the memories that they were provided by the cube. So it kind of fit with the story. But it would be so confusing because every time there was action then we'd get lost in all the thoughts and when it would come back to the action I'd have forgotten what was going on like so many times something was happening and I was like what how did this start happening so that was a bit confusing it was also a bit confusing because there were so many different races and planets and I think maybe if I'd had like a map maybe the physical version I'm not sure if there is a physical version but if there's physical versions maybe they have a map I think a map might have helped and a map of the solar system and maybe like a list of the different races because I got quite confused but I did think from that perspective it seemed a little bit like Star Wars in terms of what the world was like. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a bit Star Wars inspired. I did see something saying that it was like Firefly but I didn't think it was like Firefly at all. So then also when we got to the second book there are two kind of couples going on and I both of them end up having arguments and I felt those arguments were just really contrived so that they could have a big breath bust up and then get back together and it didn't feel real at all. I gave both these books two stars. I could see maybe some people liking them but they were definitely not for me. So out of these four books I only really liked one and even that one I only ended up giving a three. So it wasn't really a very good four books was it? But regardless, if you have read any of these four books, I would love to hear your thoughts on them, especially To Kill a Mockingbird, actually. I think that is a book that is still really interesting to discuss, even though I didn't particularly enjoy reading it. Anyway, I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.